So I adapted Walter Wengeren's uh, retelling of the Christian of the Christmas story. Wangeren is a fascinating guy. Uh, he uh, pastored an inner city biracial church for many years. He's also an author. <laughs> and one of his books um, was named the New York Times Best Children's Book of the Year and also won the National Book Award in Science Fiction. The same book. <laughs> Pretty interesting. <clears throat> In the beginning, God spoke, and the Lord God said, let there be light, and there was light. Nevertheless, there came a time when the world was deep in darkness. It had been dark for so long that the people lit small candles for themselves and pretended it was day. But God was in love with the world. He saw their little candlelight and he pitied them. It's time, declared the Lord God, it's time to do a new thing. God in heaven turned to his angel and said, Gabriel, go. And swiftly, Gabriel flew through the night, so swiftly that nobody noticed, to a city named Nazareth, to one particular house, and to one particular woman sleeping in that house. Her name was Mary. She was young and blameless and lovely, as innocent as the lily. She dreamed of a man named Joseph because they were betrothed and would marry in four months' time. She was smiling in her sleep. The angel Gabriel appeared at Mary's bedside and began to grow bright. Light beamed in her bedroom, so Mary frowned a little. She turned in her sleep and she sighed. Brighter and brighter grew the angel until he blazed like the sun. God in heaven whispered, Gabriel, why do you hesitate? Talk to her. The angel opened his mouth and said, Hail, like a bright explosion. Poor Mary startled and sat up and could not talk because she was very afraid. God in heaven whispered, hurry, Gabriel, comfort the woman. So the angel softened his glorious voice and murmured like rain in the night. Mary, hush, the dear God loves you, don't you know? God favors you, and the Lord is with you. God favors me? Mary's mind was racing in the unnatural light. What does it mean, she thought? What is he saying? Mary, do not be afraid, said the angel, still more gently. And the light grew warmer and touched her just on the forehead with a single beam of kindness. So Mary grew calmer, her mind grew quiet, and she began to listen. Behold, said the angel, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Quickly, Gabriel, said God in heaven, tell her quickly what that means. And quickly the angel did a comely thing. He stopped speaking and he started to sing. So marvelous was the meaning of this baby that it wanted a song for the telling. Mary sang the angel, this child will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David and his kingdom will never end. Baby, thought Mary, in spite of the music. How can this be, she blurted. Well, maybe the angel didn't understand the nature of human bodies. Some things had to happen first for other things to happen second. How can this be, she said. There came a strange sound in Mary's bedroom, like the creaking of the walls or the cracking of the universe. It was an angel chuckling. 
For the thing that he was telling Mary was a miracle, after all. The new thing God was doing didn't depend on nature. First things needn't come first anymore. And the baby would have a father, but not the kind that Mary imagined. So the angel continued in a happy melody. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby born to you will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. Another scene. Gabriel, God said, and the angel said, what, Lord? Go down, said God. Tell Joseph the truth. The man is in the dark. He thinks that Mary has committed a sin. Go, go. So a light grew bright in Joseph's sleep, and the brightness was a dream, but the light was the angel Gabriel, so close to the man that he shined inside his mind. Joseph, son of David, said the angel. Joseph slept on, but Joseph heard and saw, and he remembered and the more he heard, the happier he became until there was a man in Nazareth who was smiling in his sleep. Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary for your wife, said the angel. The baby conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Mary didn't sin. Mary is going to have a baby boy, and you shall call him Jesus. And this is what his name means, that he will save his people from their sins. Listen, listen, sin is the darkness of the world. This baby shall be its light, for he shall shine in the dark and take its sin away. Joseph, God is keeping his promises. Joseph, something wonderful is happening. Even in his sleep, this man, the, the man was smiling as broad as a barn. When he woke, he was positively grinning. The people in Nazareth noticed the change in him, and they became suspicious. Why do you smile all the time, they asked. Why are you always grinning? Oh, said Joseph, I'm getting married. But even after they were married, Mary and Joseph seemed odd to the people in darkness. Why are you laughing all the time, they demanded. What is that strange light in your eyes? You'll see, they said. Now it came to pass in those dark days that there went out a command from Caesar that all the people should be counted. A census, he decreed. Citizens, go to the cities of your ancestors to be counted. So people began to travel. Joseph was a descendant of David. So he and Mary traveled together to a city of David called Bethlehem. But there were many descended from David. The city was crowded with people, and there were no houses nor rooms where Joseph could lay his Mary down to rest. And Mary was huge with child and tired. She wasn't grinning anymore, was Mary. She was groaning. Joseph, she whispered, it's time. Oh, Joseph, she said, the baby is coming. It's time. Mary, can you wait a little longer? No, she said. Mary, there's no place for us. It's time, she said. So Joseph went running through the dark streets of the city. This is all he could find, a stable where travelers tethered their beasts when they slept. Mary, he said, when he led her there, do you mind? No, she said. Can you lie on the straw? It's time, she said and knelt down. And so there it was that she brought forth her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger. Another scene. And God turned to his angel, and the Lord God said, Gabriel, all the people must know what I'm doing. Go tell a few to tell others. And so it was that an angel of the Lord appeared to some weary shepherds, 
The angel said to them, don't be afraid. Shepherds, I bring you good news of great joy, and not only for you, but for all people. Listen, the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in Bethlehem, the city of David. And this is how you will recognize him. You will find a baby lying in a manger wrapped snugly in strips of cloth. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others praising God, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to all whom God favors. And the angel said, you can talk now. Try your voices. Ah, God has given you generous voices, shepherds. Speak. So then this is what the shepherds said to one another. Let us, they said, go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. So the shepherds got up and ran as fast as they could to the city of Bethlehem, to a particular stable in that city. And in that stable, they gazed on one particular baby lying in a manger. And there was his mother on straw, listening to the noises of her child. Joseph, she murmured, and there was Joseph, as sturdy as a barn, just bending toward his Mary. What? he whispered. And the shepherd's eyes were shining for what they saw. Exactly as though it was morning and not night, the shepherds went out into the city and immediately began to tell everyone what the angel had said about this child that was born. Help me uh, read these verses. Uh, join me in the words that are in yellow. John chapter 1, verse 9. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. John chapter 8, verse 12. Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. 2 Corinthians 4, 6, God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 4, verse 16, quoting Isaiah 9, 2, the people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light. And for those dwelling in the region and shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. Ephesians chapter 5, 8. At one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. 1 Peter 2 verse 9. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. John 3, 16 through 21. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light. Christ was born. The light of the world has come. To show us the way. 
That's what light does. Whatever truth you understand in Jesus, do it. Live it. There's much that each of us does not understand, but when we do sense that Jesus calls us to do such and such, let us do it. Live by the truth. Come into the light. Don't walk in darkness, but rather have the light of life. And when you and I realize that we have chose the darkness again, come to this Christ, this Savior. Receive His grace. 1 John 1.9, as we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Come to Him. Hear him say, at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Last week included the longest night of the year, the winter solstice. But then came Christmas. And the darkness is being pushed back. May it be so in our lives and in our world. Join me in prayer. Son of God, Love's pure light, radiant beams from thy holy face do bring to us redeeming grace. Oh, we feast on this story of Christmas. We stand on its promise. We look forward with hope, knowing that you are with us, you are helping us as light comes into our lives and into our world. Through Jesus, our Lord, our Savior. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Amen.